Hello, for today's example, uh, we've got ourselves a truss bridge. Uh, so this truss, truss bridge has a total of a 30 meter span. Uh, it's got two forces acting on the top. Uh, and we're asked to find the forces in each of the members uh, in the truss shown below. And we need to remember to specify whether or not this truss is going to be, uh, each member is going to be in tension or compression. Uh, so we've got a total of nine different members. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and I've already written out uh, over here what each of those is. So member AB goes from point A or joint A to joint B uh, and etc. So we need to find each one of these and we're going to be filling this in as we go. The first step in all of this though is going to be to find the reaction forces. Uh, so there's some forces supporting the bridge uh, over at point A, we've got a force going up and a force going this way. It's a pin joint. It prevents motion in both the X and the Y direction. Uh, over at point F, uh, we only have a force in the Y direction. Um, so the roller joint is going to allow it to slide back and forth, but it's going to provide an upward force preventing it from uh, falling down. So if we go ahead and draw out a, uh, basically an outline of this whole shape, we can solve for the reaction forces. So we're treating the whole truss as a rigid body. And on one end, we're going to have, this is the pin joint, we've got R1Y, that's a reaction force, and R1X. On the other end, we've got a reaction force only in the Y direction. So we've got R, 2Y. Uh, and then we've got our load forces. Again, it was a 60 kilonewton force at this location and a, an 80 kilonewton force at that location. And each one of these distances uh, is going to be 10 meters. All right, so from here, we simply treat our truss as a rigid body. So we can treat, we can uh, take the sum of the forces in the x direction, and that's simply going to be R1x, and sum of forces in the x direction is zero, so R1x is zero. That reaction force uh, is zero on that end. Uh, in the y direction, so sum of forces in the y direction, I'm going to have R1y plus R2y minus 60 minus 80 is equal to zero. So we've got two unknowns there. I don't know R1, I don't know R2. Uh, so let's go on to the moment equation. Uh, and I'm going to take the moment about uh, what was point A. So point A is on this end right here, so we're going to take the moment about that point. So the sum of moments about point A, um, we're going to have for the 60 kilonewton force, it's going to be 60 kilonewtons times 10 meters, force times distance, uh, and that's a negative moment. So negative 60, uh, negative moment is the right hand rule, negative 60 times 10. Uh, next to this 80 kilonewton force, so this is also going to cause a negative moment using my right hand rule. So negative 80 times 20 uh, about A, so minus 80 times 20. Um, and then R2Y, this reaction force is the last force I need to take into account. So that's a positive moment, it's going to cause a counterclockwise rotation. Uh, R2Y times 30 meters. All of that is equal to zero. So if I solve this bottom equation, I can solve this for R2y uh, and get a value there. Um, so <clears throat> this is going to be uh, R2y 
is equal to uh, 60 times 10 plus 80 times 20 all over 30. And R2Y uh, is going to be end up, end up being equal to 73.33 kilonewtons. All right, I plug that back into my sum of forces in the y equation. I can find R1y. So R1y is going to be equal to um, 60 plus 80 minus 73.33. Uh, and that gives me a value of 67, or sorry, 66.67 kilonewtons. All right, so the reaction force, R2Y, uh, again, that's on the right side. It's going to be 73.33 kilonewtons. Uh, R1X is zero, and R1Y is 66.67 kilonewtons. So now that I've found the reaction forces, the next step is to start looking at the individual joints. Uh, so on the individual joints, I'm going to be able to start solving for uh, the forces in each of those members. So the first point I'm going to look at, I'll start simple, start looking at point A. So at point A, I want to draw a free body diagram of that point, uh, and I'm going to draw in all of the known forces, the reaction forces in this case. Uh, and also uh, the um, unknown forces. So the, the forces in member AB and member AC. So here is point A. And on point A, I'm going to have uh, three forces. So my R1Y, that was this force here, got the reaction force of 66. 67 kilonewtons, and that's acting upwards. Uh, I also have uh, FAB. So FAB is the force in member AB, it's horizontal, and FAC is um, also going to be uh, kind of to the right, I'm assuming tension in all of these members to start. If I get a negative number, that means I've guessed wrong, and I'm going to and I go ahead and uh, know that the member's in compression. But AB to the right, and then AC down 20 degrees from that. So F A B F A C. And these are going in the direction of the members themselves. And this angle right here is going to be 20 degrees. So with that can now do the sum of forces in the x and sum of forces in the y. Since it's a particle, we can't do any moment equations. But we've got two equations, x and y, and two unknowns, so we should be able to solve for these two unknowns. So sum of forces in the x is going to be equal to FAB uh, plus cosine 20 of FAC. And that sum of forces in the x is going to be equal to zero. So next we do sum of forces in the y. Uh, in the y direction, I've got 66.67 going up. Uh, and I'm going to subtract off sine 20 of FAC. So minus sine of 20 times FAC. And the sum of forces in the y is equal to zero. So this bottom equation, sum of forces in the y, I can solve that for my value for FAC. So FAC is going to be equal to uh, 66.67 over the sine of 20, which ends up being equal to uh, 193. 194.93 kilonewtons. 194.93 kilonewtons. And so I've got my first 
uh, value here. So I can go ahead and plug this in. This is F, sorry, this is FAC. Uh, and I know FAC is 194.93. Kilonewtons, and since this is a positive number, positive numbers are going to indicate tension because I'm assuming everything is pulling on it. All right, now I can go back and solve for FAB. So FAB is going to be equal to negative cosine 20 times my value for FAC, which is 194.93 kilonewtons. So in this, I get FAB being equal to negative 183.17 kilonewtons. So <clears throat> this is a Second result, I know the force acting in uh, member AB, uh, and that force is negative, that's going to indicate compression. So 183.17 kilonewtons and C for compression. All right, let's make a little more room right here. And the next point I'm going to look at, uh, I can go a couple different places. So I know, I know the force, let's kind of mark these off as we go, I know the force in AB now, and I know the force in AC. So I'm going to look for the next point, and I can go either to B or to C. So at point B, I'm going to have three unknowns. I don't know this force, this force, or this force. I'm still only going to have two equations, so that's probably not the best place to go. Uh, but point C down here, since I know this member, uh, I know the forces in that member, I will only have the vertical force and the horizontal force uh, in BC and CE, respectively. So I can figure out these two, the forces in those two members, next. So let's go to point C. So at point C, I'm going to have um, the force in uh, member AC pulling up. So FAC, remember, was in tension, so it's pulling. And I know the magnitude of that is 194.93. And the angle, it's going to be, again, 20 degrees from horizontal. So I also, I'm assuming tension in the other two members. So member BC uh, is going straight up, and member CE is going straight to the uh, right. This is going to be FBC and F C E. Um, and that's all the forces I have at, acting at point C. So next we need to do sum of forces in the X, sum of forces in the Y uh, at these two points, and we're going to find uh, F B C and F C E. So sum of forces in the X. In the X direction, I've got negative cosine 20, times 194.93 and then a plus going down to the next line here FCE and the sum of forces in the X has to be equal to zero. For sum of forces in the Y I'm going to have sine 20 times 194.93 
plus FBC is equal to zero. So simple enough here, I can solve for FCE and FBC. So if I solve this first equation, I get FCE uh, will be equal to negative cosine, or sorry, will be equal to cosine 20 times 194.93. Uh, that gives me a value of uh, 183.17 kilonewtons. Uh, and the second one, FBC, is going to be equal to negative sine 20 times 194.93. So FBC uh, ends up being equal to uh, negative 66.67 kilonewtons. All right, so I've got one, two more values to fill in. The forces in member CE and BC. So if I plug those in, again, CE uh, is positive. That indicates the tension. So CE is going to be 183.17. Kilonewtons, and it was positive, so it's tension. And the other one was BC, so BC was negative 66.67 kilonewtons, and that's negative, so it's compression. So BC, come back over here, is going to be 66.67 kilonewtons in compression. All right, so one, two, three, four, five more to go. So let's mark off on our diagram. I now know the forces in member BC and in member CE. So next, um, I can go a couple different places. Uh, I chose to go to point B next. So at point B, I can figure out this cross member. Member BE, I can figure out those forces, and I can figure out the forces in member BD. Let's make some space on our board. So remember, at point B, I've got a couple different forces acting on my diagram. Um, so I've got the known force in AB, and in AB, it's compression. So rather than pulling on the point, I know it's pushing. I'm going to draw it in like that, and I know it's 183.17. I solved for that earlier. All right, remember BD, uh, this is the other known force I have. So remember BD uh, is going to be uh, in, or sorry, BC is in compression, so it's also pushing on the point. Um, so I'm going to draw that pushing upwards uh, with a force of 66.67 kilometers. Uh, I've got the load, so at point B, I've got 60 kilonewtons pressing down, so 60 kilonewtons that way. And then finally, I've got my two unknown forces. So I need to draw in BD, that's going to be pulling straight to the right, uh, and I'm going to draw in BE, uh, it's going to be pulling. Uh, 20 degrees down uh, from the from horizontal to the right. So I've got F B D and F B E. And again this angle is going to be 20 degrees. All right. So here we want to do sum of forces in the x, sum of forces in the y. So let's go ahead and do that. So sum of forces in the x. Uh, in the x direction, I've got 183.17. Uh, 
uh, plus FBD plus uh, cosine 20 times FBE. And sum of forces in the x is going to be equal to 0. Sum of forces in the y I've got 66.67 upwards. I've got 60 kilonewtons pulling downwards. Uh, and I've got the vertical component of this. So negative sine 20 times FB, FBE. And the sum of all those forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So I can pretty easily solve this one here. So I've got only one unknown, FBE, uh, in my equation. So I can solve and say FBE is going to be equal to uh, 66.67 minus 60. It's going to be 6.67 divided by, if I move this over the other side, and divide by sine 20. Uh, and that gives me a result for FBE uh, of 19.5 um, <clears throat> zero kilonewtons. So it's a positive number. It's going to indicate a tension in member BE. Uh, if I go back to sum of forces in the X, I've got FBD is going to be equal to... Um, negative 183.17 minus cosine 20 of FBE, which is this 19.50. That gives me a result of <clears throat> negative 201.49 all right, so negative indicates compression again. Let's go back to our solution. I've got F, uh, this is FB, or FBE. And FBE is 19.5. FBE, 19.50 kilonewtons. And that was in tension. And the other one is FBD. FBD was negative 201.49 kilonewtons, or 201.49 kilonewtons of compression. All right, three more to solve for. So next, let's go on, and we're going to look at uh, point D. So we've now figured out the forces in this member and this member. If we go to point D, uh, we're going to be able to figure out the forces in DE and the forces in DF. So two more uh, members that we can examine. And point D is pretty simple, actually. So point D, we've got FBD, um, and that we just solved for. It was compression of 201.49. So that's Pressing this way, 201.49. We've got a, um, a load force, so 80 kilonewtons pressing down on this point. And then we've got two unknown forces. So F, DF is pulling to the right, and F, DE is pulling down. We're assuming tension again. All right. So sum of forces in the X. We've got 201.49.
plus FDF uh, is equal to zero. So real quick, we can solve that. FDF must be equal to negative 201.49. And sum of forces in the y, uh, it's going to be negative 80 kilonewtons minus FDE. Uh, and if we solve that, we can quickly so find that FDE is equal to negative 80. So both of these are negative, both of these are going to be in compression. So let's fill those in. We've got DE and DF. So DE is 80, DF is 201.49. So it's going to be 80 kilonewtons of compression and 201.49 kilonewtons in tension. All right, one more point. So we found the force here. We found the force here. We just need to find the force in member EF. So let's look at point F. That seems to be a simpler one to analyze. So at point F, I'm going to have a known force pulling, or sorry, it's compression, uh, it's FDF. Uh, compression pushing towards the force, 201.49. I've got the reaction force. So the reaction force on this side, it was 73.33 kilonewtons pushing up. Uh, and I've got FEF pulling in this direction. F, E, F. And this right here is going to be a 20 degree angle. All right, so in this diagram, we only need one unknown, so we really only need one equation. Um, we can do X or Y. Uh, I've gone ahead and chosen to do sum of forces in the Y. So for sum of forces in the Y, We've got 73.33 kilonewtons. Let's leave the kilonewtons out. Uh, minus sine 20 times FEF. So if we solve this, FEF is going to be equal to 73.33 over the sine of 20, and that gives me a final value of 214.4 kilonewtons. All right, it's a positive number. So positive numbers indicate tension. 214.40 kilonewtons, and that member is in tension. So here, I've gone through and solved the last of my members. Um, I've got a, a truss with nine different members here, and I've solved for the forces acting in each one of these. And each one of these is a two-force member, so it either has, if it's compression, it's two forces, pushing together. If it's in tension, it's got two forces on the ends pulling it apart. So with that, I've solved my problem. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.